All right, boxing fans. Yeah, I'm here with Boxing Rhymes and Beats, Boxing Beats and Rhymes, and here with Louis Colazzo, who dust fresh off his win against Vicious Victor Ortiz. How you doing, Louis? How you doing? What's going on, man? Ain't nothing, man. Just, you know, enjoying this victory and just enjoying the fans, man. They've just been so, been so supportive and just grateful for every for everything. Man, it, listen, it's way overdue, Louis. I see the pictures on uh, your Instagram and you went to a school and, um, you know, you're all over New York and you're, and, and you're, and you're well-loved now. Man. Like, I mean, you're obviously beloved from everyone before, but, like, you're enjoying, you know, you're enjoying things. Like, you call out Floyd. Yo, man. So what, what, tell us what's been happening since the victory over over uh, Victor Ortiz. What's been happening with you? Well, man, you know, today I went to, to speak to the teenagers that uh, they're in a group home. And, um, you know, growing up, I didn't have much of that positive outlet that could try to, that, that could basically turn my life around. If it wasn't for the boxing, I would have probably been lost just like those kids. So I had to go back and, and, and give give them my my, up, my upcoming, you know, like uh, what I've been through in my life. And I'm very grateful to, to be part of the movement of, of positiveness, man, especially for the youth. Mm. And, um, yeah, man, just grateful and hopefully I can get a big fight. I'm just uh, waiting for the opportunity to come. And something, something's really going to come. I just got to be patient and uh, just wait to see, see what happens. Yeah, who would you like to fight? For me, I feel uh, Marcus McDonough would be, would be out of the world. That would be a great fight for you. I feel that that's the type of fight where you can look really good against. And it's, it's a good fight. But he's hot right now. You're hot. And that's a good fight for you. And then the other one people are talking about is the Keith Furman fight. Um, how do you feel? Which one do you prefer, and uh, which one do you want? To be honest with you, um, before this fight with Victor Ortiz, they were trying to line up the winner out of me and Ortiz would get Garcia, and the winner out of Garcia would get Floyd. Oh, that's but, good. But um, that Madonna fight, I would love that Madonna fight. I feel Thurman, he's a good fighter. I'm a fan. You know, I'm a, I'm a boxing fan first. And uh, I feel he hasn't proved himself yet. Wow. He just fought Soto Palace, and even before he fought Soto Palace, my last fight in October, I called him out because he said no water was wanted to fight him. Now all of a sudden, now he want to fight. Like, come on, dude. Now you earn your stripes. I've been there, done that. You go ahead and earn your stripes, man. And uh, I would love for Madonna fight, and or or Garcia. You know, he's supposed to be moving up to the welterweight division after this fight here. Yeah. And um, that's something the fans would love. I think in uh, New York or wherever it may take place. Well, yeah, definitely. All right, please go ahead. Talk to the chap. Yeah, man. Like, um, I predicted you to win, win and win in style and win easy. I predicted, like, I just I watched the styles and I just imagined how, like, your defensive skills and you know just your poise and composure. Was you as confident as I was? You know, going into the fight, I was so confident, man, and, and it's crazy because a lot of people counted me out before they even counted me in. And um, I just took that and ran with it, man. I was just a, more of a, a... I was motivated, but that just escalated my motivation to, to take it to another level, you know? Yeah. And um, I'm just blessed, man. And God is with me before I went through my struggles. But you know what? It wasn't my time before, but I believe now is my time. Yeah. And I'm going to make the most of it. I'm just going to keep giving all the glory to God, man, because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here today. Yeah, it's man. like in the first round, right? I see you you, you you was using some shell defense and stuff like that, and you was being elusive. In the second round, you decided, okay, I'm going to stand right in front of you. Did you feel that he was a bit taken back by that? Because he's got a lot of power. And I thought you was taking a bit of a gamble standing right in front of him. Was he a bit, you think he, he was shocked at that? To be honest, the first round, I wanted to fill him out a little bit. But um, he called me with a, uh, I think on the second round, he called me with a left hand. Like, he got my attention. I'm like, you know what, now it's on. Let me sit down and, and, and make things happen because watching the, the tapes, I knew he he would wind up with the hook. And I knew me and him, we, we both softball, so we're going to be throwing the same shot. So I knew if we get to the exchange and he throws his left, I throw my left, I know the hook is coming automatically. So I just had to get there before he did, and then that's exactly what happened. He opened up like I knew he was, and I just threw a nice short hook, and man. Mm. <laughs> wow. Hey, but hey, he it he, he, he looked like you know we talked to you before. You aimed straight that hit straight on his jaw. He looked like he was in severe pain. He looked like he was he, he knees bended over. That was a hey, you know that that one punch putting him down, man. It's all over the thing. I mean, 
you're talking about your fight was on basically there's nothing going on it was on a thursday you know before the super bowl you know mainstream tv well why was exposure you calling out floyd everyone's talking about you're the hottest guy right now man you're enjoying it right now right Absolutely, man. Um, I just want to get the, the, the boxing fans that deserve the exciting fights. I'm the type of person, I just want to get them the fight because they're paying for it. They're paying for it, so why not give it to them? Yeah, definitely, man. Yeah. What I wanted to ask you, yeah, you see, there's a lot of talk about boxers ducking each other. I want to go back to you in Thurman's position. Now, in boxing, it's not really ducking. I don't know if you agree with this. A few Last year, you sort of needed Thurman to prove you because he hadn't proven you didn't think he proved himself you wanted to expose him but right now you had a high profile win and he needs you so it's not ducking it's the tables have turned a little now everyone's talking about Louis Collazo I think they're just upset because now I became you know be Victor Ortiz and now I'm trying to get the big names that's right but they can't be upset you know I've been paying my dues before this I just been out of the limelight because I couldn't get no big fights. Nobody wanted to fight me because I was a high risk, low reward. It's not my fault. But now they gave me that opportunity with Victor Ortiz. I came through in a, in a you know, a crazy fashion. Mm. And now they're just trying to, I don't know, they're just taking little bites here and there. But I'm not getting upset. That's part of the game. And, and sometimes you got to talk, I guess, to, to get some fights. Yeah. Louis, man. Louis, I'm, I'm so happy for you, man. It's about time, you know, people get to see the, the real talent because, you know, the cream always rise to the top, you know, Louis. And I, I, I predict, I don't care. Anyone listening to this right now, the Louis Collazo will be any of them names put out there. A, a, a Floyd will be a very competitive fight. Yep. You, can, you know, people might think, yeah, they, Louis is going to be easy shot. Louis is probably the most hardest guy. Floyd, that's why Louis didn't put Floyd, uh, Louis on his thing. He said he wants to pick up between Amir Khan and, and Marcus, Marcus McDonough. He, right. You don't want no trouble with Louis right now. Like, right now, but they can't avoid you right now, Louis. So, you know, like you said, it's going to be your time. Like, the Danny Garcia will be a wicked fight. How about that fight in Puerto Rico? Would you love to have fight that fight in Puerto Rico? Let me say, uh, well, Marshall Chief, I know he's fighting in Puerto Rico. I'll be there watching him. Oh, okay. Him, let me tell you, that'd be a crazy fight, either Puerto Rico or New York. Yeah. Because there's so many Puerto Ricans in New York. I'm from from New York. He's from Philly. Mm. He's been all his Philly. He'd be a, he's a Philly Rican. I'm a New York Rican. Hey, man, we saw that out probably in one day, man. It, it'd be something tremendous. Yankee Imagine. Stadium, bro. Yeah. You don't have to go to the Bright. You don't even go to Brooklyn, man. You can go to the state. That, wow. That, that, you should think wow. that's, 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 what, that's what it is, dude. That's, that's massive. Hey, we could make we could make this viral. It'd be sick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Yankee Stadium. Look, man, Yankee Stadium is, look, man, I think you guys will sell it out, man. If, if that's, that's where it is, because like you said, you go over there, and especially how after the fight, hey, after the fight, if, if Danny's fight, because we, you know, I think Danny should get through. If you can go into the ring and tell him, boy, we should have this fight, and tell him Yankee Stadium, boy, or I don't know, it's not the same, but you know what I'm saying? Just, just try and get out there. Because, uh, you know, let me say, and we do it for the Puerto Rican Day Parade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that would be good as well. Yeah. Oh, that'd be that's excellent, it. man big man that's how i'll be big and the thing is you know what i don't care anyone listening that will be all this with louis is a very competitive fight you know what i mean danny's done a lot but you know he struggled with eric morales and all them guys there but louis is a whole different ball game man and it's your times oh that's an ultra competitive fight yeah man louis 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 you got mad skills man mad skills like this these guys need to know man you know what like you said they want maybe them things happen before you got your championship very early you know, and, and you got taken away from you, but people need to know you're a former world champion who basically got robbed by Ricky Hatton, and now the cream's right to the top, and it's it's Louis Colazzo. It's Louis Colazzo's time right, right now, man. So, um, yeah. Louis, it see it looked like um when you won the fight, you had the fight one, your entourage tried to rush towards you, and you stopped him, and you you went to your knees. It looked very emotional, man. How, what was going through your head at the time then? Oh man, um, you know, going into the fight, I knew, I knew God was with me, man. The, the whole from the weigh-in to the way I was just walking, just I was at peace. I didn't even, to be honest, when I went into the ring, I didn't even feel like I was fighting. That's how I calm and peaceful I was. I was just ha so happy to be there, and just to see all the outcome of all the fans that came out to support, it was just amazing. Like I, I can't even explain it. That's how. I was emotional from from jump. From once I came out, I was just emotional. I was an emotional wreck. But you know what, man? It, it turned out to be a beautiful night, and I, I hope you know everybody enjoyed the, 
as much as I did. Beautiful yeah. performance, man. What was the training camp like? It was, you must have, it looked like you had a, a banger of a training camp there. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, I bring some, uh, we have some local guys here. We bring some guys from Philadelphia, from uh, upstate New York, Rochester. Uh, I was getting, you know, I was getting some work, especially, you know, bringing four or five guys a, a day to just come in and, and switch them every two rounds. You got to be on your P's and Q's. And I know how big this fight was for me here. So I, I, I told my train, look, man, just do whatever you got to do, but just make sure I'm right. And hey, it showed, it showed, man. Louis, Louis, how do you feel about a rematch with Andre Berto? If that, if oh that, man, that was... Andre Berto, he, yeah. he needs to do something with himself. He needs to, you know, <laughs> before the fight, me and him was cool friends, but after the fight, we never spoke again. But he's been fighting with emotions since after my fight, and I think that's what's getting the best of him. Mm. He needs to go back to his old self and just regroup mm. and stop fighting with emotions because he's been getting the best out of him. And, he ain't performing the way he was before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you need to you need to teach him how to use the shell a bit better as well. You know, you <laughs> no, know so, I was going to ask a question there. Sorry, sorry. Um, you see, you defeated Victor conclusively. What's the future for Victor? And do you have sympathy for guys like that? What What's your what's your take on that? You know, um, right after the fight, Victor says he's going to retire again. So I don't I don't know what he's trying to do, but. He's still young, man. He's what twenty so He just turned twenty-seven. Mm. This is, but the thing is, this is the thing I I keep telling people: like boxing is not a part-time thing. Either you in or you out. You got to be one hundred and ten percent in or out. There's no such thing as you doing this and you doing. It's cool. You want to make extra money, but at the end of the day, you got to stay true to what you love and true to to, to the passion of, of boxing because boxing is not a, a part-time job. Mm. Yeah. I agree, man. I agree. Um, my point was uh, with 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 uh, Berto. I don't know why people that in the media and everything they talk about Berto is is rubbish. Like I, I understand that Berto was a you know when you was fighting Berto was a, a formidable opponent. You guys put on an excellent excellent show. I don't know what it is with with the media. They're trying to come out like say oh Louis Colazzo beat Victor Ortiz. It ain't that it ain't that big. But I don't care what they say. You you know then you you are trouble for anyone out there and they know it. And they need to, and I'm glad they start. People uh, in your hometown and everyone is come out and 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 showing you mad love, man. And like you said, it's about time, man. It was your, it's your time now, Louis. 2014 is going to be your year, man. Definitely. It, it's amazing because before the fight, they like, oh, Victor should get party, stop him. But he's Louis, have been in the limelight. So they was already giving him credit even before beating me. Like they, his, the plans was to answer fight or Danny Garcia next. Yeah. But you know what? Since day one, since Ricky had, not even, since I won the, the title the first time, mm. I was an opponent. Two weeks notice, they call me. Oh, you gonna, oh, yeah, of course, I'm taking it. I'm not going to turn down on title fight. Mm. Messed up that plan. Ricky Hatton came to the States. He signed with HBO. I messed up their plan, but you know, I got the show end of the stick. You know what? I'm grateful for that. Mm. I'm glad yeah. that happened. Yeah. Shea Mosey, all right, I broke my thumb. It is what it is. Andre Berto, another one. He was supposed to be coming up. They threw me in as an opponent. Echo beast. I messed up their plans. Mm. And the mm. same thing now with Victor Ortiz. I was supposed to lose. I was an opponent. And look. Yeah, you man. See, but, this time I didn't, but this time I didn't leave it to the judges. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see, when I tipped you to win, they said, oh, so you're going for the underdog. I said he's not an underdog. But I think your career has went like that a lot. Like, people in the UK didn't know how good you was before you fought Hatton. Do you think yeah. people have underestimated you? Oh, I always get underestimated. I never get the, the due respect that I deserve. But you know what? It's okay. I might be underrated, but I'm never faded. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I'm gonna, I ain't going to lie to you. What, before you, <laughs> before you fought, hip, before, before you <laughs> fought Hatton... I thought Hatton, because I, I didn't really know much about your career, I'm not going to lie. I thought Hatton was, oh, he's just going to roll this guy over. Or well, they wouldn't have picked him. And then you just you shot me. You shot me. I have to say that. So A lot of people thought that. It's crazy because um, a couple of years back, I was talking to Buddy McGirt. And um, he told me the same thing. You know, I went to dinner with my, my family, and I, I went, and they were watching the fight. But I didn't pay attention because I thought Ricky was going to knock you out in four rounds. But then he kept asking him, like, yo, this boy's putting um, some work on Ricky. He's like, what? I can't believe that. So he got up from his uh, 
table and win and started watching. I was like, wow. I, I didn't think you'd beat Ricky, but I thought you you beat him. Yeah, that's right. You did. You did beat him. You I, did beat I, him. I've been saying it for the longest. You, you know, you beat him. And um, you was too strong for him. And you you set the blueprint for Ch- Chichenko and for to beat him because what happened is that when he fought you and he lost, even though he got the decision, he went back down to his weight class again. Then he came up again against Floyd, got knocked out. And then obviously... Later years, about a year ago, then he went to get Chichenko at welterweight, where we were you, where you beat him last, and 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 he was too weak for, it. and then he got knocked out and stopped. So you know what I'm trying to say? It's a shame that you didn't stop him. You know that would have been, a, you know that would been nice. But it is what it is right now, and it's your time right now. And uh, you know we deal with the, the the future, and the past is the past right now. And you know we appreciate you giving us your time, Lou. You know because you're very busy guy. I thought that's cool. Yeah. You know this. this Can I just get one more question in? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, sir. So um. Like I don't, I haven't seen you score a lot of like high-profile knockouts. Is, is, do you feel you have to go for the knockout now? To be honest, I was I was gonna do whatever it takes to get that W because I know this time around it was my time. But to be, I didn't think I was gonna get the knockdown that early. That was my goal to try to knock him out. But man, the way it just happened, the way it was supposed to happen, and I'm just blessed. Everybody's happy, and, and it just. Turned out the way it did. Yeah, man. Great stuff, man. Great stuff. We're looking for big things anyway this year, Louis. So, appreciate yeah, your yeah, time. Dude. Hey, Louis, man. We're going to talk to you soon, man. Hey, enjoy your celebrating. And um, we'll catch you up on it on your next announcement for your fight. Next fight. Golden Boy doing all right for you, Louis. So, this is a good year for you, man. Thanks for your time, Louis. Thank you. Call me anytime, brother. All right, man. Take care, champ. Bye. All Peace. Right. Bye-bye. Yeah, for the interview? Yeah, man, come on, man. Stop playing, man. I'm ready, like, I'm, I'm ready to fight. <laughs> 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 Is there anything you want to tell the public out there? I am the great man. With a right hook left, right left, your chick flips. And then you say, God damn it. You got knocked the fuck out, man. Get knocked out, damn. What? Word is born, I'm gonna smoke him. Yo, don't break no more. What? Treat it like boxing. Stick and move. Stick and move. Watching beast and rams, watching beast and rams, watching beast and rams.